Welcome to another episode of the Marriage Mentor Podcast with Eric and Jolene Engel, where Eric and Jolene answer marriage questions for believers, looking at the root of the problem instead of the symptom, always while applying God's wisdom and word for a Christ-centered marriage. Hi, my name is Eric Engel. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Jolene, for another episode of the Marriage Mentor Podcast and Videocast. And uh, what do we got today? Today, we're going to talk about how a wife could strengthen her family when you're married to an unbeliever. So we got a message, a voice message recently, and here it is. We're going to take a listen. Hi, Jolene. It's a, it's Sue from Oregon. My husband is um, a very strong man. He is um, an alcoholic. And he has always made very good decisions. So he's a functioning alcoholic. He has trouble adjusting to my daughter's um, a new boyfriend who is um, of African-American uh, descent. How can I have my husband lead our family to a positive state if he is like this? I'm a Christian. He is not. Um, how, how can we make our family better okay so this is the gist of it um daughter has new boyfriend that dad does not approve of dad's not a believer mom is she wants a stronger family how does she get her non-believing husband to in essence not break that relationship with his daughter right and she insinuated it's based on uh, the boyfriend's race. Mm-hmm. Uh, she didn't outright say that, but that's that's what I understood. Right. And he's an unbeliever. So how can a wife, how can a wife deal with an unbeliever? I mean, you know, I say, hey, now we don't have daughters, but we have sons. I say, hey, I don't like, I don't like my son's girlfriend because she's green. I don't like, I don't like green girlfriends. Right. Okay. What do you do about that? Well, as a wife. I always go back whether, you know, you might be listening to this podcast or this video cast thinking, well, my husband is a believer, but maybe he's not a very strong believer. So the encouragement is always as a wife to go back to first Peter three, one, and it is our conduct as wives that may win our husbands over that don't know the word to, that they may know the word. And so, so if your husband is a believer or barely believing it's the same pre- premise. It's always the conduct of how how do I come toward you as a wife? If I come to him in a very aggressive and unsupportive manner, do you want to draw closer to me? Do you want to hear anything I have to say? No, I want to punch you in the nose. <laughs> I've never done that, but you know, that's that's the feeling. But that's the feeling. The feeling is, you know, let's take you all the way back to the time that you guys were dating. Obviously, a, hus- a, a man is not going to ask a woman to be his bride if she is very controlling and contentious and um, belittling and argumentative, right? I mean, right. who would want to marry that? I mean, that's just marrying pain right off the bat. Right, you right. Know? So I think it was really interesting how um, you come across this verse in First Peter that it's just really about being a kind wife, you know, being supportive, being encouraging. And what can I do as a wife to kind of bridge the gap from where my husband is in in regards to the family relationship? Okay, so let's let's just make this a little more generic so it can be applied in several different areas. But let's say I'm an unbelieving husband, you're a believing wife, and I'm talking about something that you feel is wrong or unreasonable. What? Or rude. Or rude. <laughs> I've never rude, but outside of that, you know, what? how are you going to approach me? Always with a manner of a gentle and quiet spirit. Now, do I always get that right? Of course not. I don't always get that right. Uh, no bride always gets that right because we have our sin nature. But the more that you could walk in um, your relationship with your husband in this sense of trying to um, be closer instead of contending pulling each other apart, the more influence you're going to have in his life. Okay. So let's say she has the influence, Mm -hmm. uh, but 
does that mean that uh, she just she just keeps her mouth shut? I no. mean, can she approach him? Absolutely, you know, she he's can a, approach him. He's an unbeliever. Is she going to? She could certainly approach him. I um, appreciate Isaiah one eighteen. Um, it says, "Come now and let us reason together," says the Lord. I do believe that you could have conversation with unbelievers. I do believe a wife could have a conversation with an unbelieving husband and keep it um, non-emotional, meaning it's not a heated thing. It's not a combative right. thing. It's just like, hey, hon, I see that you, you know, you're a little concerned about our daughter dating this guy. Now, why is that? Well, because I don't like the color of his skin. Okay, so do you see any redeeming qualities about him? You know, are there some good there? Do you want to have a relationship with your daughter? Because what's going to happen if you keep pushing him away? You know what? You're doing some great techniques that I don't, I don't know that people might pick up on. But what you're doing is not telling me anything. No. But you're oh, asking no. me questions. <laughs> if you go to your husband and you ask questions to draw his answers out, because when you when you ask questions, people don't feel threatened. Don't parent your husband. Right. Okay? <laughs> if you go and tell him, hey, you're just an idiot, okay, and you shouldn't act like this, you're not going to get the response you want. But if you say, hey, what what's really going on here? Why do you feel that way? I would believe, and, and I would say this to him, you know, or you, I believe deep, deep down inside you probably want to have a relationship with your, your kid. Is that a true statement? Yep. How do you think, you know, you could be closer to them? What do you think would pull, push them away from you? Well, frankly, if he didn't care about his daughter, then he wouldn't really care about who right. she was dating. Right. So right. he does care about his daughter. So it all goes back to influence. He doesn't want to lose the daughter. So by telling the daughter, I don't approve of all these things and, and, and lording it over her, right. it's going to push her away. Well, and sure. And if he pursues this this way she's going to make a hand gesture to him and walk mm -hmm. out the door right right and she might even elope that's right and then he'll lose his daughter altogether right, right. so i think uh, one of the um very discerning very wise thing a wife could do is i think about queen esther how she went to the king she found the right time Obviously, um, when you look at the the verses there, it says that she had favor with the king, you know. Right, and he was not a believer. He was not a believer. So when, when I talk about favor, do you have favor with your husband? Are you known as a kind wife? Are you known as a passionate wife? Or are you a wife who says you're a believer, but you're withholding sex? Okay, you're not going to have his favor then if you're shutting him out, okay? So you want the friendship. You want the, you want to be lovers. I mean, that is having favor. You want the kindness. You want the consideration. You want, you want to be able to give him respect. And all those things create a beautiful way of influencing him and having an, an, a conversation, a reasonable conversation, because I believe if you love that man, you're going to want to help him protect the relationship that he has with his kid and not lose it. Of course. And the only way you're going to have influence is if he feels that you are for him right. rather than against him. Right. He doesn't need another mommy. And he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he's already got a mom. He wants a wife. He married a wife. So be the kind wife that you were when you dated. Right. And I believe that, that she can reason with him in such a way because it, when it really comes down to it, it's someone does, when someone doesn't like someone for their col the color of their skin, it's really not the color. I mean, it's really more of their idea of who they are rather than just a color. Well, but no again, one, no one gets hostile over a color. I don't go out. Oh, the sky is blue. I'm really been out of shape. Right. No, it, it's it's more of their idea of who they are, or and they may have wrong ideas about who they are based on the color of their skin, which is absolutely wrong. Because right, of, right. I mean, that is certainly a biased thing. But even if the color color of the skin wasn't there, Dad could have been like, he's got too many tattoos. Or he's got all these piercings or, you know, bottom line is, as parents, is there ever a child that is good enough to marry or date your child? Nope. No. You know, so again, I look at being his friend, walking through life with him, asking him, what do you really want for your daughter? And it's not the guy, it's the relationship between you and her. Right. And, and if he sat down with his daughter, I mean, this is just wisdom. If he sat down and said, so... Tell me about this guy. What do you like about him? Okay. And she might go, well, I don't know. Okay. That asking those questions might bring her to a point of going, well, mm -hmm. I really like him because this, 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 and this, or I, I like him because you don't. 
Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a touchy, that's a different topic. Right. Different right, but, topic. Um, but that's what I would do as a wife. But it all would, comes back to relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would be a wife who chooses a friendship with my husband and, and I want to make sure that I'm also a lover because that's marriage. So I would use my relationship to ask him those questions of what do you want as a dad? What type of relationship do you want with your daughter? And what can we really do to help foster that? And then ask those questions. So do you think if you said these things to her that she would be more drawn to being your friend? Because you're at a point now as parents where you're no longer, you know, training up that three-year-old. If they're old enough to date, hopefully, I'm hoping right. that it's not a 13-year-old, right. you know, that they're older, ready to date. And you want to still have that influence in the life of your kids. So. Well, and the Bible says that a kind word turns away wrath. Right. So right. if you want to uh, avoid the wrath, approach him with a kind word and a kind spirit, and you're going to go much farther with that. Right. Until next time, we're Eric and Jolene Engel at JoleneEngel.com.